Well, welcome back everyone. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since we last had any kind of video. Uh, well, it's been a bit more than a couple of weeks. Um, in the meantime, we have set up the new rig. Uh, that was done a couple of weeks ago. It um, took a bit of effort. It was about four days total uh, to put it all together um, and get it up and going. And since then, cat scratching noises in the background. Um, there was uh, a little bit of time to do some driving. So I've done a bit of a walk around of the rig, which we will get to shortly. Um, and I thought, while, while we think about that, the other things to consider are what we've all got. Um, that'll get covered in the, in the rig. I'll give you some links to all the equipment that I've got. Um, and we'll finish up with a bit of a, a review thoughts on the build process. I know I, I was planning to um, record the whole build and put it up, but it turned out to be kind of garbage viewing. I didn't get the best um, vantage point for, for recording. And having done that, it was um, kind of pointless. Uh, in the meantime, let's just crack on with the walk around and then we will have a bit of review. So let's get to it. So this is the new rig uh, that we have set up. You can see we've got, that's my PC, this is a, an Alienware Area 51 R5, it's a bit old now, but it does the job. We have my seat, so this is an X-Rocker uh, 4.1, what is it, an Evo 4.1 gaming chair. So it has um, obviously four speakers, one subwoofer, uh, it also um, can do vibrations which are really only just triggered off of the bass coming through. Um, it does its light up little tricks when you uh, turn it on. So it uses Bluetooth to get sound out of the computer, which is excellent. Um, the rig itself is a Trap Racer TR80 uh, rig. So we'll talk a bit about that. Um, my microphone there, that's just a, uh, a blue Yeti. Um, I have my 34 inch, I think it is. Uh, ultra wide curved gaming monitor so that's with my computer. I have my little 21 inch there vertically mounted. Uh, my camera there is just a Logitech camera. Um, we have a couple of screen mounts there. This is just an old Ikea um, bit of furniture that used to be part of my desk. Um, so I've just reused that as weights holding it down the bottom to balance it out so it's not going to tip over. Um, and then we have the rig itself. So we've gone for the um, it's the Podium DD1, but it's the uh, PlayStation version, so it comes with PlayStation wheel. Uh, we've got this little dust cap so that you don't have to worry too much about the pins when you don't have a wheel on. And considering I use this for my usual computer, so my daily computer and for other gaming, I figured if I don't have a wheel on all the time, that gives me more access to the keyboard, and it also allows me to just feel a little bit more comfortable if I'm just sitting back and relaxing. Um, so that's just a little 3D printed job, um, there will be a link to a design where you can get that. I don't own the IP at all, um, it's a Creative Commons. So I've got that, that's the DD1, showing the wheel that comes with that. We've got our emergency stop button down here, um, which is just for making sure I don't get myself caught up in the, in the wheel in a high power incident. We've got the um, Fanatec. It's a club sport, I think. Um, the 1.5, I think, uh, handbrake there, attached to the shifter. Uh, so that'll be more something I use when I go rallying. And we've got the club sport V3 pedals down there. Um, so we've got the gas brake clutch. Uh, what else have we got? Um, we also have the Fanatec rim. So that's a, I think a Club Sport, a Club Sport Elite rim, um, I think. Just a Club Sport. Anyway, that's there. It's got the um, Universal Hub, which has the quick release on it as well. Um, and you just basically, that comes as one kit and you Choose your colour between black or gold screws and screw your rim onto your hub. Um, and this being the 
uh, podium, so the Formula V2, I think it is, wheel. Um, so that's fine, and again, quick release, so you can just uh, put that onto, onto the wheelbase quite quickly. So it's really just more or less what you'd expect. Uh, we'll see if we can just get this to stabilise here. Yes. So it is as simple as lining up the groove, so there's a groove in there. That guy, have a little lined up. No, I have not. Put that in the noob. Just going to poorly for No, that's lined up. So line it up, put it on there, and then tighten that up as much as you want. And that's how that works. And then remove it. Similarly for this guy. I find this one harder to get on, mainly because of its size. Right, well I'm not going to try and force it from a weird angle. I will just leave that so we don't bend pins. Um, anyway, so that's how that goes. I'll put my cover back on. Um, so one of the things that I think are really going well now with my coordination. Things I found interesting about building this. Um, we will talk about after a short break. Um, it took me about four days uh, working on the weekend and after work. Um, you can see, as far as my optional extras, I haven't got really that many. I've got my um, my mouse platform, my uh, like keyboard deck. That's pretty much it. Uh, the other thing that I had to do to make sure I could power my um, my seat was I had to cut into the side of the seat support there. Obviously, this isn't a racing seat. Um, so that was a bit of a challenge. Uh, so we'll see how we go. Right, so that's the walk around. Um, how did I find the build process? Uh, it was a little bit harder than I thought. I went for a bit about why I went for this. I went for a aluminium profile rig, um, simply because it's a bit more, as far as I can tell, a bit more customizable in the future. Um, it's a bit more customizable out of the box. So for example, um, having emergency stop buttons down here um, it was nice it's actually not um, connected directly to the profile it's actually just double sided taped on um, but being able to mount my shifter where I want I've got my keyboard tray here um, that swivels that needs a little bit of improvement I think just to bolster it on this side for when I'm using it for non sim activities um, my mouse uh, deck here with my microphone on it um, I've done the fantastic um, handbrake attached directly to the shifter, um, so that's good. Uh, I talked a bit in the walk around about the um, seat, which is the um, X-Rocker RGB Evo 4.1 or whatever it is. That required um, the modification to make sure I could actually connect up power to it, um, which required modifying the seat bracket. That wasn't the seat bracket I was planning to use. Uh, I did purchase what's um, sold by Track Racer as the recliner um, slash office chair fitting. The problem with that is that if I'd managed to mount the seat on it, and I probably could have, it would have been kind of an attachment space like that. And I'm pretty sure that doing that, I would have been walking around and eventually broken something. So instead, we've just taken the arms off of this seat uh, so the armrest, and I'm not really going to need those if I'm playing. I'm going to either be, you know, mouse and keyboard or driving, so that's not a problem. Um, I mounted it, and that took a little bit of modification. Um, I also seem to have ended up with a shelf. I'm not sure that I ordered the shelf or paid for it, but I've got a shelf, um, so it's meant to be a PC shelf. Uh, notionally, Track Race would have you mount that here behind your wheel deck. Um, I kind of looked at that and went, well, that's going to get in the way of my feet or it's because it's a fairly sizable tower, it'll block the screen and I'll need uh, 
a new monitor stand. Uh, the monitor stands that I have, they're just, you know, kind of cheapy ones off Amazon. Cheapies, they're, you know, 100 bucks or something total. I don't know, something like that. Um, so I've put them back where they are, rather than buy the um, rig mounted one, which costs twice the price. Um, and or, or getting a freestanding one which takes up even more space outside the rig. So that's kind of why I've made those decisions. Um, I've made the choice for going for the direct drive setup and etc. Just so I'd, I have no further excuses for why I'm bad apart from it's down to me um, and I know that I have to improve if I'm going to be any good at doing this. So that's, that's my justification. The building of the rig, um, there's a lot of crawling around this isn't a huge room it's you know kind of probably a standard second bedroom size um, space from when this house was built which was mid 80s uh, so there's enough space with some of the furniture in that I can build it it was a tight fit um, and the other thing is that once you start building it there's a lot of shifting stuff around um, doing the bolts up tightly takes a little bit of effort uh, to the point where I actually found a strain to chest muscle afterwards um, and that was good fun for a couple of weeks. I think that's pretty much recovered though. Um, there's also, you can see, i take one off, a lot of these kind of things. So get right up there, which are like end caps. Uh, you have those that are end cappy ones and there are other ones for that are the double size ones for the ends of the wider profile and there's the thinner pieces for the thinner profile the thin and um, also the angle brackets the thinner I found that a lot of these um, so there's on an end profile piece there's these guys that go into the little screw slots there and then there's like these other little bits that poke out that are to help guide it and keep it a bit stiff um, I found particularly on the end caps for the shorter ones, a lot of those had some of the little arms snapped off, which wasn't the best, um, so that was painful. Getting the, the wheelbase on was probably one of the harder pieces in terms of getting it to balance and getting it set, um, and then adjusting the height. So I got it set and everything was pretty much good. I think I'd used the wrong screws to begin with, they were a bit too short fix that up um, and then I was like oh it's a bit too close uh, at the moment I've moved my um, seat in so that I'm a bit closer for accessing keyboard and mouse but um, so then I was like okay well let's push that back without having to modify the settings down below of where the uprights are which would take even more time and in doing that uh, slackened off the screws slackened off the nice little handspring lever parts uh, it dropped a little bit um, and I could feel it was getting ready to drop, so I was jam a hand under there and then have to support that. That's a seven kilo wheelbase. Um, there's probably another couple of kilos of steel supporting it. So doing that at short notice, jamming hand under to support and lift that up, that wasn't the most fun ever. Um, the other, other hard parts, really it's just some of the fiddly bits when you're getting into um, tight spaces with uncoordinated hands to some extent and using um, socket wrenches so it's pretty much all uh, hex screws from memory I had to buy a couple of um, M8 nuts to put the wheelbase uh, not the wheelbase the pedal deck or the pedals onto the pedal deck um, otherwise that went together pretty smoothly the first injury that I had did to myself in putting this together I got minimal nicks and, and scratches and stuff but the first one was actually in unwrapping some of the profile um, from cardboard. So it was essentially comes in a box and then it's wrapped um, with thin sheet of cardboard around it and just got a paper cut off that. That was pretty early on in the piece. So that was um, different. Um, so I think realistically setting it up was pretty easy. Um, the other thing that made me feel stupid was uh, accidentally having the emergency stop already activated with my knee when I went to turn on my wheelbase and not working out why that was happening. Once that was sorted out, it was all okay. Um, I think it's pretty easy to use. It's easy to swap over between a PC and a PlayStation 4. So I've got the PS4 for Gran Turismo if we want to do a bit of that. Um, there's a nice crying cat in the background. I hope you're enjoying. Um, and the other thing, which I thought was kind of interesting, um, Fanatec clearly expects you to have a wheel on at all times because they don't give you anything to protect the end of your shaft and the pins, which is why I went and sourced the... Um, 
the dust cover cap, which I think is uh, probably a really good investment. I'm surprised Fanatec don't throw something like that in um, just as part of the thing. And it's uh, designed to fit pretty much every Fanatec wheelbase that's got an interchangeable wheel, which I think is all of them. Um, yeah, so, so far it's been good. I am rapidly improving my pace and my driving ability. So that's great. We'll have some more driving videos up soon, as well as that promised glove review for the gloves with the direct drive wheel. Uh, in the meantime, have a great day and see you next time.